a matter of fact, coached in this first Hall of Fame bowl back in 1976 when he coached in Maryland. The Mountaineers of West Virginia led onto the field by Don Nealon, their great head coach. West Virginia had suffered through year after year of losses, and now West Virginia has an opportunity for the third year in a row to go to a 9-3 and three record coming into this game. So it's cold here in Birmingham, but the fans are very warm. They've had a great time enjoying the southern hospitality of Alabama. They've traveled from Lexington, Kentucky. They've traveled from Morgantown, West Virginia. And we are expecting an exciting game. As we told you a moment ago, Craig Sager is going to be reporting from the sideline. And let's go down to Craig right now. Well, thank you, Bob. Coach Jerry Claiborne is coming through right now. We want to talk to him for a quick second, and he is right here, so please stay with us. Coach, you mentioned before you've been to bowl games. You're at the first Hall of Fame Bowl. But is this one kind of special after the year last year at Kentucky? Well, actually, we're just really excited about this bowl game right now. I tell you, the fans are excited. Just had the fireworks. I hope we get some good fireworks starting here in about 15 seconds. It's been fun, but you're here to win now, right? We've had a great time. We've had a great time all week long, and... But here's a, here's a uh, icing on the cake right here. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Coach Jerry Claiborne of Kentucky will be talking with Coach Don Nealon also at halftime. Back to you, Bob. Okay, Tim Foley, how about a couple of comments? First of all, as you look at Kentucky here, what do you think the keys to the game are for the Kentucky Wildcats? Well, I think defensively for Kentucky, they're going to have to contain the scrambling and running of Jeff Hostetler. He's an excellent technician. But if they can keep him in the pocket, he's going to complete a lot of passes. If they can keep him in the pocket and contain his running, I, you know, I think they can put a lot of pressure on his West Virginia offense. Okay, how about West Virginia? Hostetler's the man you're always talking about, but they've got a good defensive team, too. No question about it. Timmy Ag is a killer back in the secondary, and he just intimidates people that comes into that area. Uh, offensively, they've, they've, they've been conservative all year long. They've got a kind of a short passing game that we'll talk about as the game develops, and running, they're running conservatively, but I think, again, tonight, you look for every trick play that you've ever seen. I, I think that Kentucky has them all in ton tonight, and it's going to make it an exciting football game. My point out that the special teams play could be a factor here tonight. Chris Caudell, the field goal and placement kicker for Kentucky, had been suspended for disciplinary reason, and the man who will be kicking the field goals and point afters has never attempted a college field goal. He's a walk-on by the name of John Hutchinson for Kentucky. Now, there was also a disciplinary suspension for West Virginia University, Willie Drury, who is their fine kick and punt returner. So there's some inexperience in the kicking and punting return game for West Virginia. Thereby, the kicking game could be a big key to what happens here tonight. We're about ready to kick it off from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. So you stay with us, and we'll be back right after this. When Valvoline announced its gold medal sale with special prices on Valvoline motor oil, we knew it'd be popular, but we didn't know it'd be like this. I can't believe it's all gone. Getting a top quality motor oil, an oil that won a gold medal for lubricating excellence at a money-saving offer, is too good to pass up. I can't believe it's all gone. Better get yours now while you can. Look for Valvoline on sale where you see the gold medal sale sign. But hurry, it's going fast. Men never cease to amaze me. Some guys don't think twice about the cologne they use. But a cologne says a lot about a man. And I think the cologne that says it best is English leather. English leather has a clean, masculine scent. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, a man should wear English leather or nothing at all. Look, I don't fall for a guy just because he wears a nice cologne. But I know what I like. And I like a man to wear English leather or wear nothing at all. There you see the history between these two teams. Kentucky leading the series 11 to 7 to 1. West Virginia 6 and 4 in bowls. Kentucky 4 and 1. West Virginia loser last year in the Gator Bowl to Florida State University. Kentucky last played in a bowl in 1976 in the Peach Bowl in Atlanta, Georgia. As you see, Kentucky is about to kick off. West Virginia won the coin toss and did elect to receive here in the first half of play. Number 98. Kicking off for Kentucky is John Hutchardson. As you take a look now at the deep bend there for the West Virginia Mountaineers, going back on the goal line, King Harvey, number 33, is over to the left of your screen, and number 20 is John Hollifield. Ready to get underway. There's a good-sized crowd here, although the weather has been certainly less than desirable the last day or two leading up to this game. 
And they were suspecting that a lot of folks wouldn't show up, but it looks like we're going to have a sizable crowd. This game is underway. On the field at the goal line. Down at the 14-yard line. And he was hit first by number 40, Larry Smith, a freshman for Kentucky. So the West Virginia Mountaineers go on offense, first down 10 from their own 14-yard line. Jeff Hostetler, their quarterback, Wolfley, and Tom Gray are the starting halfbacks. Hollins, Bennett, and Wayne Brown will be the receivers. Old gold and blue, the colors of West Virginia. And off the right side goes the fullback, Ron Wolfley. And Don Nealon, the head coach for West Virginia. Don Nealon has an interesting theory about calling plays in a football game. He scripts out the first 12 to 15 plays before the game gets underway. He doesn't want to become tight typecast. He gives them a few different sets. He wants to see what Kentucky's doing. Two receivers split off to the right side of your screen. Second down, about seven. Complete at the 27 yard line intended for Tom Gray, the tailback. Kevin McClellan, number 49, covering for Kentucky. Let's look at the backfield now for West Virginia University. There's Jeff Hostetler. He's going to go to law school, probably play some pro football when he graduates this year. Tom Gray's been hurt a lot this year, healthy tonight, however. And Ron Wolfley, by the way, his wife just delivered a brand new baby girl yesterday, Ashley. So congratulations to Ron Wolfley, brand new papa. It is third down eight from the 16, West Virginia. Hostetler under pressure, down at the four-yard line. Oh, that Wildcat defense was all over him, led by Steve Mazza, number 38, and number two, Brian Williams. They came from the left and right sides. A little delayed bootleg. You see Dave DeJarnett pulling out in front of Hostetler. He's looking for the tight end crossing. The tight end's covered. Doesn't have enough time to reload and go to the split receiver before Williams and the fellas get there. And now Steve Superick, number 11, has to punt out of his own end zone. He has a sore right punting leg. Let's see if it affects his punting. Gets away a pretty good punt. It's going to come down to Brian Williams. Williams breaks outside. To the 20-yard line, Brian Williams. The Wildcats. With the opening break, he was tackled by Ron Wolfley. And there, Kentucky, a nine-and-a-half-point underdog, has an opportunity to get something on the board early. He kicks this from his own end zone. It's straight into the wind. The ball hung up. Williams makes a nice move straight upfield and down the sideline looking for the wall. Wolfley makes a touchdown-saving tackle. 38-yard punt, a 23-yard return. First down, 10 Wildcats. A lot of motion into the eye, two receivers up to the top. Fumble on the play. Wildcats maintain possession. Randy Jenkins bobbled the snap, has it at the 24-yard line. Let's meet the backfield now for Kentucky. There is Randy Jenkins. He's thrown 10 TD passes this year, a senior. Kurt Cochran is the fullback, 5'10", 210 pounds. And the key to the running game, George Adams, 743 yards on the year, seven touchdowns. They came out in an unbalanced line that first time out. Let's see what they come with this time, Bobby. Second down, 14. This is George Adams. For the 12-yard line. About two yards short of the first down. Number 44, Tim Agee with the stop. You know, watch the blocking here as this play goes off to the left side of your screen. That's Ron Bojala pulling around. The tackle blocking down Don Corbin. Kurt Cochran gets a nice block, and they spring Adams into the secondary. A.G. hustles over to make the stop. George Adams, only a junior from Lexington. Seven touchdowns rushing, one touchdown receiving. We saw him earlier this year. He had 135 yards versus Vanderbilt. Adams is out. Mays is in now. Excuse me, Adams is still in there. Adams has the football. Adams, Mays, and Cochran went into the backfield. Three running backs. Let's look at the wide receivers now and the tight end for Kentucky. There is Joker Joe Phillips, 22 catches, three touchdowns on the season. Rick Massey, 17 catches, three touchdowns. 
And the tight end, the leading receiver, Oliver White, 26 catches, but no touchdown receptions this year. Here's the situation right now. We have fourth down and one, and they're going to try the field goal from the 17-yard line. And this is John Hutchinson's first attempt. Fake, Bob. It's a fake. The backup quarterback, Martin, throws it out of the end zone incomplete. The holder is Doug Martin, the backup quarterback. He was trying to find Oliver White deep in the end zone. He was not there. And Kentucky, after getting the ball all the way down to the 12-yard line of West Virginia, fails to come up with anything. The fake looks good. Those two receivers on the right of your screen released right off the bat. He was looking for the man coming from the weak side. It's a good gamble to take by Claiborne. He's got a fellow that's never kicked a field goal before. They're in good field position. If they can get out and score a touchdown right off the bat, that would just continue to generate the momentum that they and, and emotionality that they've carried into the game. So the Mountaineers have dodged a bullet. First down, 10 from their 11. They try to run it. Tom Gray. Gray breaks out for a first down to the 24-yard line, tackled by 26 Paul Calhoun. So West Virginia, after the short punt and the long return, now has some breathing room. West Virginia's passing game is potent, to say the least. Here is Wayne Brown, number 19, 18 catches on the year. Rich Hollins is the deep threat, four touchdown receptions, 47 catches, and Rob Bennett, 6'6", 240, the tight end. The dive goes off the right side to tailback Tom Gray. Kevin McClellan with the tackle for Kentucky. Opening moments of the first quarter of the 1983 Hall of Fame Bowl from Legion Field in Birmingham. The temperature at game time was 35 degrees. It's expected to go down to about 25. The wind chill is about 10 degrees. You're standing in the wind. And yours truly and Tim Foley are, in fact, standing in the wind. <laughs> There are the current weather conditions for you. Second down, seven. From the 27, Hustetler. Right side to Gray. Gray couldn't hold on, probably just as well, though. He was about two yards deep from the line of scrimmage, and he could have been knocked for a loss had he caught that ball. So it was a wise judgment to let it go by. Here's the offensive line now. Brian Joswiak is the left tackle, 6'7", 260. Barrels is 6'3", 245. Leg, 6'3", 250 is the center. On the right guard position is Scott Barrows at 6'3", uh, excuse me, Dave DeJarnett is on the right side, and Kurt Keel, 6'6", 255. Those fellas actually are flip-flop from what you saw there. But you've met the offensive line of the Mountaineers. Third down, seven, Hostetler. Down again. Second time tonight, Hostetler has been sacked. This time, he was nailed back in his own backfield by number 92, David Thompson. Thompson has started at nose guard in place of Glenn Emerson, who had to miss some practices. Comes up with a big play. Kentucky, for the most part, has played good defense all year long. They've got a fine secondary. The secondary coach is a fellow named Terry Strock, and if he's got good people, he's got a good secondary. If he's got poor performers, he still puts together a good secondary. Good teacher. Superix punt. It's a good one. Ryan Williams, number two, had a 23-yard return last time. Doesn't get that much this time, down at his own 40-yard line. So the Wildcats get an opportunity to go on offense once again after failing to capitalize with good field position earlier. We'll be back in just a moment to Legion Field in Birmingham. Play fake, Jenkins then throws to George Adams. Adams to the 46-yard line. Jenkins is finished. Adams. Tackle made by number 50, Matt Smith, and let's meet the offensive line of Kentucky. There's Shirtlift, the left tackle, 6'3", 250. Don Portis, the left guard, is 6'2", 255. Jerry Klein, the senior, center, 6'2", 240, has his hands full with Dave Oblak, the middle guard. Ron Bojallet is the offensive captain at right guard. And the right tackle, a real pro prospect, Don Corbin, he's 6'5", 250. Second down, four from the 46. Nothing going that time. Down at the 46-yard line, tackle made by Steve Hathaway. Like Hathaway and Preston getting there about the same time. They're the linebackers or the, the defensive line for West Virginia. Hughes, Merritt's, O'Black. O'Black's a strength in there in the nose. In the secondary. Dave Preston just made that hit there. Newberry has been a consistent performer for three years for him, and Timmy A.G. is just a vicious hitter in that secondary. This is third down four from the 46-yard line. Two receivers now over to the right side. Pitch to George Adams. 
He gets the first down to the 48-yard line of West Virginia goes Adams. He's been a busy man thus far tonight, and that's no surprise. Adams, the leading ball carrier, leading ground gainer, and leading touchdown scorer for the Kentucky Wildcats. Those are the fans from West Virginia looking on from Legion Field. Another fine block there by Kurt Cochran on Anthony Daniels that sprung Adams, enabled George to get that first down. First down 10 from the 48 there is Randy Jenkins. He's completing 58% of his passes this year. Only thrown one so far tonight. He completed it. I think West Virginia has the ball. Yes, Mountaineers ball at the 47-yard line. Once again, having trouble handling the ball out there. Remember, it is very cold. Wind chill of about 10 or 12 degrees down on the field. It's Dave Preston who came up with it, number 38. Looked like he never had the handle on it coming out from the center, Bob. I thought for a minute that Portis knocked it out, but Randy Jenkins never really did get the ball from the center. Jerry Klein that time. So Preston came up with it, and now West Virginia has the ball with their best field position. And we'll be back in just a moment. First quarter of play from Legion Field. This is Turner Network Television. Yo, Gray is a 6'1", 180-pound sophomore from Somerville, New Jersey. The running game lost its balance for West Virginia a bit when he was injured for a couple of plays during the season. If you look at Jerry Claiborne, the head coach at Kentucky in his second year, 0-10-1 his first year, came back this year to lead the Kentucky Wildcats to a 6-4-1 record and a bowl game here in Birmingham. To the 42-yard line goes Tom Gray. He will be the workhorse of the ball carriers. Nobody on this football team has more than 500 yards rushing the ball. And frankly, Tim Foley, you might say that the running game has not carried its load. No, it hasn't. It, uh, they're going to live by the pass here, and, and they're going to depend on the big Haas to do the job. And there's a Kentucky defensive front. Mazza Smith, Amerson, Keith Martin, David, David uh, Thompson is starting in there for Amerson. Linebackers Grimsley and McClellan both have done an excellent job all year long. Terry Baird was all SEC this year. And Calhoun, their free safety, Bob, plays a lot like Timmy Agee, except he's a little bit bigger. But he just intimidates receivers coming across the middle. Number 80, Todd Fisher, coming into the ballgame for West Virginia with a play from Don Nealon. West Virginia 0 for 2 on third down conversions. And when you saw just a moment ago, they're inches away from a first down. It'll be third down inches from the 43-yard line of the Kentucky Wildcats. Seven minutes, eight seconds remaining in the first quarter. And there's a good look at number 15, Jeff Hostetler, a straight A student at West Virginia University. Double tight ends, power formation. They give it to Ron Wolfley, the fullback, and the new Papa gets the first down inside the 40. Wolfley is a junior, 6'1", 205, from Orchard Park, New York. His wife, Kathy, is the mom. We won't talk about it a whole lot more to embarrass the young man, but he was uh, he came here to this bowl game with his wife expecting and was making phone calls every 30 minutes, I understand, so he found out the news yesterday. Well, he's going to find out that uh, there's nothing quite like being a daddy. It is first down 10 from the 39. Hustetler's going to throw. Almost picked off. Looked like a moment of indecision for Jeff Hostetler as he sprinted out to the right side. It was Kerry Baird covering Hollins. Baird did a nice job covering Hollins there, and one of the keys to the success of the Kentucky defense is going to be to contain that man right there. They've got to keep his mobility restricted. If he's allowed to roll out and break containment, they're going to have a problem all night long. So you're going to see, you're going to see Smith upfield most of the night thinking about containing Jeff Hostetler. Rough start for Hostetler. He's 0 for 3 and has been sacked twice thus far in this ballgame. Second down, 10. Here's Tom Gray to the 32-yard line. Needs to get across the 30 for the first down. Jeff Smith, number 79, with a stop for the Kentucky Wildcats. Jeff Smith will be in making a lot of plays for Kentucky. You'll be hearing his name quite a bit. Let's take a look at the offensive and defensive line play now from our end zone camera. You see Scott Barrows pulling from his left guard position. Blocking on, it looks like John Grimsley. Is that 56 or 59? John Grimsley opening that hole. 
is third down, two from the 32. Tom Bowman, number 22, and at the fullback position now. Handoff goes to Tom Gray. Gets a block from Bowman. Gray is going to be short of the first down. However, Jeff Smith with the tackle once again. Smith, the junior from Springfield, Kentucky, leads this team in quarterback sacks, tackles for losses, and is a stalwart over on the left side of the defensive line in this wide tackle six, eight-man front defensive alignment for Jerry Claiborne's Wildcats. He's probably their best defensive lineman if you just consider pure talent. Uh, he'll probably develop more consistency as he gains experience for playing, but uh, he's their most talented lineman. West Virginia's going for it, fourth down, and about one. Hostetler tosses. This is Tom Gray, gets the first down. To the 26-yard line goes Tom Gray, tackled by Kerry Baird, the defensive left halfback. And the gamble on fourth down pays off, and West Virginia keeps their drive alive. This was a gamble in a short yardage situation. Whenever you throw the ball backwards, you're taking a chance. You saw Brian Wilson blitz in there. Watch Kerry Baird. He plays Rich Hollins perfectly, works off the block. If, if he hadn't done that, that would have broken for a touchdown because there was no pursuit there initially. First down 10 from the 26-yard line. Tom Gray gets the carry again to the 23-yard line. Keith Martin, the defensive right guard, making the stop for the Wildcats on this play. Grimsley and McClellan have played well all year long. They just, they, along with Scott Schroeder, who is a linebacker who will see limited action, but he's kind of like El Sid to this Kentucky football team. They, he's had three knee operations, but they always bring him and they dress him because he's such an inspiration to his teammates. Second down, seven from the 23-yard line. Hustetler's 0 for 3 passing. 0 for 4 now, incomplete at the 15-yard line, intended for Rich Hollins. This Kentucky defensive team's been very tough defending against the pass so far. Little moving pocket, rolling out to the right. Hostet looking downfield. We've got an option pattern on down there. A good job by Paul Calhoun reaching in and knocking the ball away. Third down seven from the 23. Ron Wolfley back in at fullback. He's number 36. Gray is 32, the tailback. Hostetler, incomplete, what a hit. It was intended for Wayne Brown, number 19, at the goal line, and what a hit by 22, Kerry Baird. Wayne Brown wanted the pass interference call, but Tim, I think you'll agree it was a sensational defensive play. It was a great defensive play, but let's take a look here. I think a lot of Kentucky fans are taking a deep sigh of relief right here. The ball is, it, it was, we couldn't really see it in the replay. Watch this. It's right about on time. He may he might have been a little bit early, but it's close enough. And you know, as a defensive player, I don't like to see pass interference called anyway. Good play on the ball by Kerry Baird. Here's a 39-yard field goal attempt by Paul Woodside. It is good. And Paul Woodside puts the Mountaineers of West Virginia up to a lead with three minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Three to nothing, West Virginia. That all happened after a fumble recovery by number 38, Dave Preston. But Randy Jenkins of Kentucky had trouble handling the snap. There are the, there's the kicker, Paul Woodside for West Virginia University. You're looking at the deep backs for Kentucky previously. Number three, Tony Mays, and number 33, George Adams. If Mays gets it, he is the nation's sixth leading kickoff returner. That's George Adams, number 33. to say Adams was stopped at about the 17-yard line, and the Kentucky Wildcats will go on offense. I don't know why you need dark glasses for the nighttime game, but perhaps there's been a little too much partying there for do need, that young fan. Do need some earmuffs, though. I feel like I'm in Foxborough without my legs pantyhose. Kentucky football, first down 10 from their 17-yard line. Jenkins, one out of one passing. He's only thrown the ball one time. Not much of a passing game by either team so far tonight. There's the handoff going around to George Adams after the fake to Kirk Cochran. West Virginia said, we see that one all the way and made the stop. A loss of about four yards on the play. They've given them a different formation on every snap. They're just trying to confuse that 
West Virginia defense. That time they ran a tackle trap, pulling Don Corcoran back into the sidelines, but West Virginia played it well. Cochran the fullback, Adams the tailback. That's George Adams. To the 28-yard line, he was tripped up by number 44, Tim Agee of West Virginia University. They've run that play successfully twice now, Bob. Ron Bojallet, another great block up front. He's the inspirational leader in that offensive line. George Adams, we've seen him trucking. We saw him against Vanderbilt. He went, he had a 54-yarder in that game. At 135 yards total, he's, a, he's an excellent running back. They're gonna have to stretch out the chain here to see if they got it. First down, Kentucky. Kentucky's starting tight end Oliver White is out of the game right now having equipment checked over and freshman Mark Wheeler is in at the tight end position for the Wildcats. Wheeler's a little bit better receiver than he is a blocker so this might not be a bad first down passing situation. Split back formation for the Wildcats now. Right up the middle, and it goes to the fullback, Kurt Cochran, on a first down play out to the 33 yard line. Defensive leg ta tackle, Jim Merritt, the senior, makes the stop. Jerry Claiborne. At Maryland, he had kind of a conservative offense, a two tight end offense, and they used to blow people off the ball. Uh, here, he didn't have the personnel to do that, and he and his staff traveled over to Cincinnati and talked to Lindy Infante, who was with the Bengals at the time and they've incorporated some of their short passing philosophy into their offense. It's second down five from the 33-yard line now. Kentucky Wildcats trailing three to nothing, closing moments of the first quarter. That's Cochran again. He gets across the 35 to the 36-yard line and merits with the tackle once more. Two minutes remaining, first quarter. Three to nothing, West Virginia University. It's about 29 degrees now, but the West Virginia cheerleaders are used to some cold weather in Morgantown. Randy Jenkins, Went from the GOAT last year to the hero this year. He's come a long way. Last year, he only completed around 45% of his passes, and they used to leave notes for him on his windshield of his car. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Third down, two double tight ends. Nothing going. West Virginia is there to stop Lawrence Lee, number 28, with the ball. It'll be fourth down and a punting situation for the Kentucky Wildcats. They've got a good punter, too. Paul Calhoun is also a defensive back. Leads the SEC in punting. Is 10th in the nation. Averages 43.2 yards per punt. There's Paul Calhoun. He is a junior from Louisville, Kentucky. For 28, Steve Newberry is back to take the punt reception at his own 20-yard line. Wind is at the back of the punter. Newberry at his 24. And Newberry with a good job of returning the ball out to the 39-yard line. We'll be back in just a moment. 43 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. This is Turner Network Television. We just had to find a cheaper way to heat and cool our home. Goes to the Mountaineers in that passing game in terms of yardage. It's first down 10 from the 39-yard line. First down run on the first down. Tom Gray, the carrier. Gordon Jackson with the tackle. Tom Gray had 40 yards on that carry. Now he has over 50 yards already here in the first quarter. See the offensive line. There's Barrows, number 54, pulling again. They're trapping. Opening up the hole for George Adams. Excuse me, Tommy Gray. Gordon Jackson makes a fine tackle in, in the open field. First down 10, West Virginia. Just inside Wildcat territory. And off to Ron Wolfley. Hopefully gets about four tough yards. Goes to the 47, tackled by John Grimsley. See some folks on the sideline. That's Coach Hallam there standing up. He's the uh, offensive line coach. They're talking some things over the Kentucky Wildcats. Understand this. If you're defensively, if you're concerned about containment, you're going to be more upfield, and it's going to make you a little bit more successful susceptible to the trap and that's what West Virginia is doing to Kentucky right now that's the end of the first quarter West Second quarter from Legion Field in Birmingham 1983 Hall of Fame Bowl there you see in the background is a TBS director of sports Terry Hansen executive vice president Bob Wessler and sports executive producer Don Ellis in the stands a little chilly here tonight a 
Ross Stetler is incomplete on that one. He is now 0 for 6 throwing the football tonight. West Virginia leads by a score of 3 to nothing. We have 14.55 remaining here in the second quarter. Jeff Hostetler, we had an opportunity to hear him speak at the Hall of Fame banquet. Probably the most eloquent college man I've ever heard in my life. After that talk, Smith Barney called up and offered him a job. On the third down eight from the 47, Hostetler, it's picked up. That's Russell Hairston, number six. Hairston to the 46-yard line. Hostetler, 0 for 7 with one interception. Jack Devlin's got his Kentucky defense fired and wired. Great call here. Man the man underneath. Hairston just playing center field as the nickelback makes the interception. 6'4", 200-pound sophomore that's got a tremendous amount of ability. Wildcats get another opportunity. They trail 3 to nothing. First down 10 from their own 46. Jenkins avoids the sack, gets a block. Pass goes incomplete. Intended for Oliver White. Good pressure back there. <laughs> That's Coach, Coach McMichael. He's one of the offensive uh, line coaches for West Virginia. Kind of talk some things over. They're going to buy Hostetler a little bit more time. Randy Jenkins under a lot of pressure on that last play. It's second down 10 from the 46-yard line for the Wildcats now. That's George Adams again. This Kentucky running game looking pretty impressive, as is the Mountaineer running game, I might say. That goes inside West Virginia territory to about the 46-and-a-half-yard line, tackled by Dave Preston, his third of the game so far. George Adams now been a workhorse so far tonight. That was his seventh carry, and Adams has 30 yards. Dennis Brown, the former quarterback at Virginia and the defensive coordinator for West Virginia that has put together a solid defense here. They've only they've given up less than 100 yards a game with the run. On a third down two, three backs in the power formation. That's George Adams. Gets the first down to the 43-yard line. Tackled by 38, Dave Preston. Very active out of that right inside linebacking position for the Mountaineers. I didn't have the feeling that the offensive coaches of Kentucky felt like they could run the ball this effectively on West Virginia. This is just straight ahead. Once again, behind Bo Jallett and Corbin. Definitely the strength of that Kentucky line. They're all stacked up on the right side. From the 43-yard line of the Mountaineers, receivers split wide left and right on the first and 10. Jenkins under pressure. Gets rid of it, though. It's complete to number 87, Oliver White, the tight end of the 33-yard line. Jenkins had gold and blue all over him back there, but was able to release the ball for a pass completion. You're going to see Whitey Daniels, number eight, blitzing from the outside. Now the inside linebacker has to get over and cover the tight end. He's hustling to get there. That's David Preston, but he doesn't. Trailing him a little bit. Doesn't quite make the play. There's Don Nealon, personable head coach, West Virginia University. Enjoyed our chat with him, preparation of the ball game. They win tonight. His teams will have gone nine and three, three years in a row. George Adams inside the 35, close to a first down. Anthony Daniels and Dave Preston combining on the stop for the Mountaineers. Can't say enough nice things about Don Nealon, probably the most cooperative coach that we've worked with all year long. Came to a program for the year before, was two and nine. They went 500 the first year. In the last three years, they've been 26 and nine. Had a couple of good quarterbacks, Oliver Luck, who's now with Houston, and they've developed Hostetler into a great quarterback. Don Nealon was pretty fair quarterback himself at Bowling Green. The team was uh, very successful when he was quarterback there, later coached at Bowling Green. It is a first down, as you see, when they stretch out that chain. This is the fifth television appearance this year for West Virginia University. We were telecasting a game on TBS earlier this year with uh, Maryland and West Virginia, and Don Nealon said he told his fellows they were becoming America's team. <laughs> George Adams again drives inside the 30 and Hughes with the tackle this time 
George Adams with his 10th carry of the night. West Virginia better get used to this kind of exposure. They had four losing seasons in a row before he arrived. And as you mentioned, if they win tonight, that'll be the third year in a row they've won nine. Second down, six from the 29-yard line. Adams again to the 26-yard line. He runs smack dab at the 250 pounds of Jim Merritt's number 96 for West Virginia. Saw 38. Dave Preston getting up off that tackle too. Preston came in here behind Derek Christian. Preston's a senior and he's been very active tonight. It's been tough for me all week. I've got Howard Schnellenberger, who is an All-American at Kentucky, lives down the street from me, and then also right down the street lives Fred Cowell, who is an All-American at West Virginia. So I'm under a lot of pressure here. This is third down three from the 26-yard line, and now Kentucky uses a timeout for. Jenkins to come over here to chat with the brain trust of the Kentucky Wildcats. Randy Jenkins has certainly come a long way, struggled a little bit last year, but this year he's thrown for 1,272 yards, 10 TDs, only 10 interceptions, completes 58% of his passes, and has broken a lot of University of Kentucky records. And now let's go down to the sideline to our colleague, Craig Sager. Thank you, Bob. With the Floyd Little, one of the newest inductees into the College Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Thank you, Craig. All these reports about Jim Brown coming back. If he comes back, are you going to come back? Well, I, I made a statement that if, if anybody breaks my fumbling record, I might consider coming back. But at, at 41 years old, I don't have any questions about coming back. I don't want to come back. At Syracuse, you had some big rivalries with West Virginia. How do you see this game so far? We did. It's been a pretty good game. I, I'm really impressed with Kentucky and, and, the, and the, their ability to stay in there because they're much smaller than than the West Virginia team. Yes, we've had some good rivalries over the years, and, and the game has been pretty good, pretty close so far. It's only three to nothing. Bob? All right, Craig, looks like a halfback option coming up, going long. That's Tony Mays throwing. That's Jenkins catching. Touchdown! Tony Mays, the halfback, throws to the quarterback, Randy Jenkins. Oh, boy, Kentucky has taken the lead. A 26-yard touchdown pass. the former quarterback he came to Kentucky as a quarterback well, this is the one one of the things that Jerry Isom the offensive coordinator for Kentucky was talking about they don't they're not in bad shape usually if you're not expecting a play like this the guy's wide open but Mike Scott if he had gotten his head back around might have made a play on the ball Mays threw it well under pressure and Kentucky gets on the board Hutcherson with the point after it's perfect Kentucky leads 7 to 3 with 10.59 to go in the first half. When we return, I can't wait to see a replay of that. Stay with us. Again, Kentucky ball from their own 26. And it's Mays throwing to the quarterback, Randy Jenkins. Look at Randy looked like he was trying to take off there for a while as he kind of drifted back in, kept his eye on the ball all the way, and made kind of a tough catch. Great job, Randy. As you were saying earlier, Bob, whenever a team goes 0-10-1, the quarterback takes most of the heat. And usually it's a combination of things as you as you look at the number of plays of drive, three minutes and 44 seconds, time of possession. They had a bad offensive line last year. They didn't have much speed. They didn't have much of anything. And Randy Jenkins took the brunt of the criticism. And students left notes on his car saying, why don't you leave? And, and uh, he went through a lot. So it was quite a rewarding experience for him to receive the MVP offensively this year for the Kentucky Wildcats. That kickoff comes down short. It's loose down there. Battling for it is 20 Hollifield. Kentucky says they have it, but let's wait till we get the official signal. The officials say the ball remains in the possession of the West Virginia University Mountaineers. So we've had two scores in the game, a field goal by Kentucky and a touchdown by, uh, a field goal by West Virginia and a touchdown by Kentucky as you look at this kickoff again. And both came as a result of turnovers. We almost had another one when Hollifield mishandled the ball. Well, Don Nealon expressed some con concern about his kickoff returners and he didn't really have anybody back there experienced in this game. First down 10 from the 20 yard line. West Virginia. Hand off Gray. 
Gray to the 23-yard line. Harvey at the floor. Let's check that. That's number 33, King Harvey. The junior who came in to replace Gray, who was such a workhorse in that first quarter. Gray had 52 yards rushing. He's getting a little rest now. And King Harvey, who's just a little guy, 5'8", 175, comes into the tailback position for West Virginia. Second down, seven from the 23. Hostetler, 0 for 7 with one interception thus far. His eighth passing attempt. He's going to tuck it in and run it out of bounds. Hostetler picks up the first down, I believe. Let's see where they say he went out. So Hostetler still has not been able to complete a pass in this game, and we have 10-13 to go in the first half. That's what Kentucky's got to keep him from doing right there, breaking containment. He will create problems. He'll either tuck the ball and go for 10, or he'll throw it downfield for a 10 or 15-yard gain. And don't think that that young man's confidence is shaken. He's a competitor, an experienced player. First down 10 from the 31-yard line. Hand off to Wolfley. A couple of yards on the left side. This looks like Scott Schroeder in there on the tackle as you look at Don Nealon. Sends his plays in with his wide receivers. And Schroeder's a young man who's had three, three knee operations. He hurt his uh, knee one week and they sent him to Houston to get it operated on and had him back at LSU on the sideline because they felt like his presence was so important to these other Kentucky players. Second down seven from the 34. King Harvey to the 37-yard line. He needs to go to the 41 for the first down. Cam Jacobs, number 48, with the stop for the Kentucky Wildcats. Surprisingly, with a 7-3 lead on a half-back option pass to quarterback Randy Jenkins. As we mentioned, offensively, Kentucky has been conservative, but they managed to blend in enough big plays to put points on the board. 33 Harvey, 22 Bowman in the backfield on a third down three. West Virginia from their own 37. This is Harvey hit in the backfield. Stopped at the 35-yard line. The penetration made by 79. Jeff Smith, the defensive left tackle. Don Nealon a little concerned. Great call by Jack John Devlin, the defensive coordinator for Kentucky. He slanted Jeff Smith right into this play. The linebacker was scraping to contain it. Play never had a chance to develop. Here's Superick and punt now, averaging 43 yards on two punts. He has a sore punting leg, causing him a little problem, apparently. Brian Williams at the 30. At midfield. To the 37-yard line goes Brian Williams. The Wildcats have come to play. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Turner Network Television. And a 34-yard return by Brian Williams. Williams does an excellent job of getting upfield as soon as he can. Laterally, a few steps, and now bang, upfield. Then he searched the wall out and headed up the sidelines. And a, a, an excellent play by the kicker to prevent a touchdown. Well, the Wildcats lead 7-3, 8-16 to go. Second quarter from Legion Field in Birmingham. Hall of Fame Bowl, 1983. Looks like we got a good one on our hands. There's a misdirection handoff with the ball is Lawrence Lee to the 23-yard line. First down, Kentucky. Lawrence Lee, the fastest running back on this team, a 5'10 senior from Paducah. You can see Don Portis pulling there, number 71. Cleaning things out. Vernon Johnson also leading the way. Gets a block on Derek Christian. And it's just upfield. Kentucky doing an excellent job on the ground running the football. This is Lawrence Lee again to the 20 yard line. Ball came loose. The officials are saying the ball came loose when Lee hit the turf. Thus, it is not a fumble. You cannot fumble if the turf knocks the ball loose. Choo -choo Merritt's with the tackle. Right, Choo Choo Lee. With, they like to get him into the secondary with those quick traps. Has tremendous elusiveness and speed. And just want to get him down there one-on-one. -on -one. Coach Jerry Claver told me this morning that Lee has 4-4-5 four, four, speed in the 40. Here's a reverse, but West Virginia is there. 
nothing going at all. Eric Pitts, the freshman, tried to take the end around and got back to the original line of scrimmage where they started the first down. A loss of about three or four yards on the play. Still have two downs to make it up. Run the reverse, and this could have been a pass unless he was just searching to put it away. Don't be surprised to see a reverse pass later on. That's a half back pass in reverse. You're going to see it all from Kentucky tonight. And a big penalty on the play going against Kentucky all the way back to the 40 yard line. But some problems with the referees, Mike Donald Safran. The announced clipping against Kentucky. Back to the 15, so it's second down forever. Second down, 26 for the Wildcats now. They lead 7-3. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the first penalty of this game. Flag free so far. Joker Phillips, number eight in motion. Here's Jenkins. Got a screen to Cochran, almost picked off. Jim Merritt <laughs> came flashing through there. Number 96 and almost had headlines and goal lines in front of him. Much Merritt's there, number 96. He's a converted nose guard. He's played the defensive tackle position, read it well, saw the back in the flat. Jenkins threw it out there. Fortunately, he was thrown a little bit high. Jerry Claiborne just pulling out all kinds of trick plays here in this bowl game, and we appreciate it. It's an entertaining football game. I hope you're enjoying it. Wherever you may be watching on Turner Network Television, third down 26 from the 40. Jenkins. Incomplete. Down at the 24. Intended for Cisco Bryant, number 19. So Kentucky unable to come up with anything. We're going to pause 10 seconds now for station identification. Number 26, Calhoun, is in to punt. His first punt was 41 yards. Steve Newberry is back at his own 10-yard line to receive the punt for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Calhoun's good at getting this ball down inside the 10. Let's see how he does this time. It's not inside the 10, but it's inside the 20, down to the 11 or 12-yard line. Good job by Paul Calhoun. West Virginia, we're going to have to drive a long way to get some points on the board. 6-17 remaining in the second quarter. Kentucky 7, Mountaineers 3. Dear Mom, we're sorry we can't be there with you and the family, but we're sending you some things. We she think gave you everything you'd ever need to chase your dreams and make them real. She gave you love to last a while, and now you're giving back the smile. And Mom, we send them with all our love. Seven to three, six seventeen to go in the second quarter. Hostetler 0 for seven, throwing the ball. Doesn't throw it again. Hands off to the tailback. Out across the 15 goes Tom Gray, number 32. Tom Gray, who was injured during the middle portion of the season, he hurt his knee versus Boston College and missed three games. But Gray is really the the guy who balances the running attack here. They need him in the game. Hostetler. We saw him had a very tough start against uh, Maryland when we telecast that game earlier this year, and he came back, and of course, West Virginia eventually won the game. And he was the MVP. On second down, six. Out across to the 22-yard line goes Tom Gray once again. And that's going to be about a yard short of the first down, I believe. Their big weapon is Hostetler. Obviously, the Kentucky defensive coach is concerned about stopping him most, and that may be opening up, up some doors for Gray to the inside. And Leg and Jarnett, Keel and Barrows, and the big Joe Zwiak are opening some holes. Double tight ends. This is third down one, West Virginia. That's Gray. First down to the 26-yard line. Tackled by Kerry Baird. We understand that Rob Shellhouse 
who's a special teams player for West Virginia University, was injured on one of the special teams plays earlier. He has injured his right knee, has left the game, is not expected to return. Senior from Pittsburgh. There's Tom Gray's stats on the year. They're not that impressive in terms of total yards because he was injured several games. He has 66 yards already in this game tonight. On the first down, Hostetler looking for his first completion going long. Incomplete. He was looking for Gray down the near sideline out of the backfield. Couldn't connect. Hostetler goes now to 0 for 8 with one interception. Well, they got the matchup they were looking for on that play. Kentucky man to man underneath. Grimsley, John Grimsley was running man for man with Tom Gray. The ball just a little bit overthrown, but Grimsley was in good shape. Neither one of those Kentucky linebackers are very, very big, Grimsley or McClellan. They're both very mobile, and they do a surprisingly good job of taking on that straight ahead power running. This is second down 10 from the 26 yard line. Now, two receivers are split up to the top of your screen there. Uh, Stetler. Almost intercepted. Paul Calhoun had that one whistle right through his hands. We're going to see the secondary, Kentucky secondary, watching him work here as they drop back to their zones. You see Wayne Brown turning to the inside, slipping down as he comes back up. Hostetler throws the ball, and again, Brown goes down to his knees. That group of young men are playing themselves quite a football game. They've played well all year long with the with a few exceptions. They're doing it tonight. Gary Mullen, number one in one of the wide receiver positions now. Complete again. That pass intended for tight end Rob Bennett, number 84. It was Russell Hairston covering. Oh, that Kentucky defensive unit has played well. It'll be a punting situation for West Virginia. 4.24 to go, second quarter. Kentucky leading by a score of 7-3. to three. Hairston playing a linebacker position on that particular play. Man-to-man -man all the way as Kentucky blitz Hostetler. They're doing a nice job of mixing up the blitz, the pressure, and the coverage. Keep, keeping the young man from West Virginia off balance. A little bit of problem with the snap. Ball is going to roll that down here at about the 36-yard line, and Brian Williams doesn't have an opportunity to return it this time. So Kentucky takes over the ball. They continue to maintain a lead. We'll be back in just a moment. Himself, he pitches back to the tailback. It's 28 Choo Choo Lee. Lee able to struggle to the 40-yard line, not much further. Three fine tailbacks for Kentucky. They have George Adams, Tony Mays, Lawrence Lee. They can just keep running them at you back there. There's Choo Choo Lee now. He's coming out of the ball game. George Adams has gone back in. It'll be second down. And let's call it seven yards from just inside the 40-yard line for the Kentucky Wildcats. Don Corbin just came off the field, Bob, and uh, he seems to be having a little bit of a problem with his shoulder. Corbin, the strong defense, uh, offensive right tackle. Gee, what a great grab out there. Just short of the first down, they're saying it was not a great grab. Great attempted grab by number 87, Oliver White. He had to spin around from behind to try to hold on to that ball. White is the leading receiver on this Kentucky team, but has no touchdown catches and is a pro-size tight end. They use the Cincinnati passing attack, and simply what that means is that... Uh, most of the patterns are not called in the huddle. They may call a pattern in the huddle, but the receiver will read it on the run. White, as a tight end, as he comes across the field, will find an open area and sit in it. Third down seven, Joker Phillips in motion. Jenkins under pressure. Look at him avoid the sack. There were four players who had an opportunity. Joker Phillips with the football, number eight. Phillips all the way to the 41-yard line. Credit Randy Jenkins with nimble Barishnikov footwork. <laughs> Jenkins to Phillips for a big Wildcat first down. Look at this young man's field presence here. Because they are coming clean up the gut. That's Steve Hathaway missing. Mike Scott, a cornerback, coming from the outside. It's man-to-man -man coverage, and Phillips drift drifted away from the man that was covering him. Broke a couple tackles. Here's a handoff to Lee. Lee gets to the 
37-yard line. That was a 22-yard pass reception we saw just before. So, frankly, Tim, we saw Kentucky play Vanderbilt on one of our earlier TBS telecasts, and Kentucky was a ball control, very conservative field position football team. I expected West Virginia to be a little bit more exciting in terms of moving the ball and throwing the ball tonight, and it's been just the opposite. Kentucky coming out here and pulling loose all the stops. Well, well that's like saying a baseball team can't hit the ball. You know, somebody's pitching it good, and, and Kentucky's playing excellent defense tonight, Bob. This is second down five. Jenkins finds George Adams to the 24-yard line. Another Wildcat first down. Matt Smith with the stop for West Virginia. Split end just clears this out. Good first down, just a short option. First down play, just a short option by George Adams. He reads zone, turns it around, and Jenkins dumps him the ball. Adams is the second leading receiver on this football team. He's a complete fullback, or tailback, I should say. Seven touchdowns running the ball and had 24 catches coming into this game. Running off the left side goes Kurt Cochran, the fullback. He's tackled by 47 Ed Hughes. Coming up at halftime, we'll have Craig Sager on the sideline to talk to some of these coaches and players. West Virginia Mountaineer Band, a special report on Bowl Week. The Kentucky Band will perform, and of course, the highlights of the 1983 Hall of Fame Bowl first half. We have one minute, 48 seconds remaining in the first half of play. We're going to break away now for a special message from the National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics. They're trailing by four now. The Wildcats have a drive underway. Cisco Bryan in motion. That's George Adams. Down to about the 18-yard line. Dave O'Black, the middle guard, with the tackle. Well, Jerry Isom, the offensive coordinator for Kentucky, said that Randy Jenkins had to make some big plays for them to win. And he's had a couple so far in this first half. A, a big catch. I, I'm not sure that he was thinking about that. And, uh, and also a nice scramble and throw to Joker Phillips as Don Nealon looks on. Double tight ends on a third down four now. This is a handoff to Cochran, the fullback. He is short of the first down by about a yard. Last time Kentucky was this close on a fourth down situation, they faked a field goal, and the holder for the field goal placements, Doug Martin, overthrew the ball in the end zone. So let's see what they decide to do now. That is going to be short. Jenkins looking to the sideline to Jerry Claiborne to see just what they've decided to do on the fourth down short yardage. The ball right at the 15-yard line and 50 seconds and counting remaining in the first half. Kentucky fans are yelling go, but fans always yell go for it because <laughs> they can second guess next time. I think uh, they're going to decide to just uh, attempt the field goal here or fake it. You know, this is one of those, Tim, where you may say, well, they, we faked it last time. They'll think that we wouldn't fake it again. So since they think that, we'll fake it. Again. It might be one of those times. However, I don't think it's going to be one of those times. I think that. Uh, but that's what they want you to think. Right. Yeah. They, I think Jerry is going to take the three here if he can get it. And. Uh, the big lineman's down there warming his leg up. He, I don't know if he's that good an actor. Or, I think he's trying to nail it here. And remember, John Hutcherson, the youngster you're looking at right there, is a walk-on. He's an offensive lineman walk-on and a straight-ahead kicker. He has never attempted a field goal in collegiate football. Chris Caudell, the Kentucky kicker, was suspended from the football team for disciplinary reasons before this bowl game. And Hutcherson has taken on the duties. Hutcherson has kicked off because Caudell had a strained groin muscle earlier in the season and has also converted on a point after touchdown. Two now. He had one before the game and one in this game. So this will be his first collegiate field goal attempt, a 32-yarder. I can hear his heart thumping from our press box location. It's good. Well, that's a good way to start your collegiate field goal kicking career in the Hall of Fame Bowl 1983. And Kentucky goes out to a seven-point lead, 10-3, to with 38 seconds to go in the first half. Offensively, they've been strong all year. They've outscored their opposition in the second quarter, 2-1, to one, and in the third quarter, 4-1, to one, which means that they've got an excellent offensive staff. 
here in Birmingham, the home of Legion Field is also the home of the Southeastern Conference. And speaking of that, SEC basketball will come your way if you're a TBS viewer this year with Skip Carey and Joe Dean. By the way, if you're a Superstation viewer, you're going to see some of those great games that you see on the screen right there. And if not, you can certainly contact your local cable system company to subscribe to the Superstation. We hope you're enjoying our telecast from wherever you may be watching around the country. We have a lot of fine broadcast television affiliates in various cities around the nation, in addition to the cable subscribers from coast to coast. Very short kickoff. It's going to give them trouble again down there. Oh! Going down hard is Keen Harvey, number 33, at about the 17-yard line. The Hutcherson kickoff is kind of like a nine-iron shot. It just kind of digs into the turf down here and gives some problems for the receivers. There's some coaches who try to hit the ball in this area. I'm not sure that that's what he's trying to do or if it's just being blown back by the wind, but Russell Harrison was down there in a hurry to put the hurt on King Harvey. Well, if you're tuning in late, you probably won't be a college football fan and have followed the career of Jeff Hostetler. You won't believe the statistic. Hostetler is 0 for 10 with one interception with 34 seconds to go in the half. Hands off to Tom Gray, his tailback. Gray out to the 22-yard line. Clock down to 27 and ticking down. And now West Virginia University has called timeout, and Don Nealon trying to decide if he can get anything going in 26 seconds to put some more points on the board here at halftime. He's on the phone with Russ Jacks, who's in the booth. Russ is the offensive coordinator. And they'd like to come up with something. Don's been around long enough to come up with something creative if he wants to take a chance at this particular time, or, or maybe they'll just decide to run it out. But what a football coach he has been, and the people of West Virginia really love him, and I can see why. Personable and warm. It doesn't have uh, some coaches get real anxious and nervous before the game and I'm sure he does too but he certainly doesn't display it. Well the Kentucky Wildcats who normally play six defensive linemen two linebackers and three defensive backs have now gone to four defensive backs anticipating the passing game and I would uh, venture a guess here As a matter of fact now they're putting in five defensive backs in the Kentucky uh, defensive alignment. I would venture a guess here that Hostetler may in fact complete a pass before the half is over because Kentucky will probably be dropping back very deep. They are about 40 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Draw play Tom Gray. Gray to the 32 yard line. First down. That'll stop the clock. Down to 20 seconds in the half. And one of the Kentucky players is shaken up on the play. That'll stop the clock also. I think it's John Grimsley, their fine left linebacker. Let's hope that youngster is okay. He leads the team in tackles. Well, he has for three years in a row been an integral part of their defense. He, matter of fact, he was injured making the tackle on that play. 20 seconds remaining in the first half. It's a surprising 10-3 Kentucky lead over West Virginia here in the 1983 Hall of Fame Bowl. Might take a moment to thank all those fine folks from the Hall of Fame Bowl who have helped us out and who have staged this game. Fred Sington, Dan Henley, Luke Cranford, Jim Simmons, Houston Blunt, Charles Martin, Paul Thompson, and all the folks with the Hall of Fame Bowl Committee who've done such a great job entertaining and, and being very hospitable to both of these football teams and, of course, our TNT and TBS Sports uh, broadcast crew. Fine bowl indeed. It's $1.1 million will be shared by these two teams as the payoff for this bowl. There are 16 NCAA sanctioned major college bowls and this bowl Hall of Fame bowl in its seventh year has moved into the top half in terms of money payments to the teams. Another handoff to the 34 yard line to Tom Gray. So West Virginia is going to take away my prediction that Hostetler would complete a pass before halftime. They're going to let the clock run out here. Hostetler is going to finish the first half. 0 for 10 with one interception. Kentucky leads by a score of 10 to 3. And I can't wait to see what West Virginia decides to do to get back in this game in the second half. Now let's go down to the sideline to Craig Sager. Well, thank you, Bob. Coach, what's wrong with Jeff Hostetler? 0 yeah. for 10. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't think we've ever been 0 for 10 at the... I don't know if he's cold or what, but uh, we've never been 0 for 10 at the end of any first half. we got to get him going. 
we're running all right, but we're not throwing, and we got to get some yards passing. Looks like he's throwing behind some of the receivers. Yeah, he sure is. I'd like for him to hit him in the hands. Okay, thanks a lot. Coach Don Neal and his team trailing at half, 10-3. Back to you, Bob. Mountaineer Band right after a message from each of tonight's schools.